My name is Anselm van Rood. In Dutch, it's pronounced van rood. And rood, it means the color red. My first name, people always think it's Scandinavian or something like that, but it's actually Anglo-Saxon. It's a very old Anglo-Saxon name. And it literally means the helmet of the gods, Anselm. I'm very loath to describe myself as an artist because that word artist these days covers a multitude of sins. I prefer to call myself an image maker, um, but I'm a painter and I'm a drawer and really drawing is the real foundation of my work and I love to draw from life, from the incredible richness of life. People always ask me, where are you from? And I never know what to say. Usually I just say St. Kilda. But um, I was born in, in London. My father's Dutch. Our family is Jewish. And I was born during the Blitz in London. I can't remember any specific thing, but I can remember the feeling of danger coming from the sky. And to this day, I feel really uncomfortable in twilight, when the day is going into night, I've, I find it very hard to be alone. There's a kind of deeply buried fear of the night. But after the war, my father was employed by Royal Dutch Shell, and we went and lived in Venezuela and Colombia. So I spent most of my childhood in South America, which was a wonderful blessing. Now when I look back on it, and I think about the music, and I think about the incredible tropical landscape and I think about growing up and learning Spanish and and seeing all that incredible variety of different ways of life different forms of life and it was a it was a great blessing but at the age of 12 I was sent to a boarding school in Scotland which nearly killed me it was terrible and <laughs> it was cold and it was violent and it was the British boarding school and I spent uh, five years there and then I went back to South America and I was apprenticed to an artist in Bogota in South America and I spent a year there and then on the 1st of January 1960 I arrived back in London uh, to study art at Chelsea Art School <laughs> and it was brilliant. After the, the, the terrible limitations of the war, it was this explosion of culture and of music and of theater and of painting, architecture. So I lived in London throughout the 60s. I got married and I became a father. I've got a daughter, Katinka, and I continued to live in London. At the end of the 70s, I went to India and I lived for a year in India. That was a transformative time. India has a way of getting down into your soul. I only lived in the Northwest. So I lived there for a year and then uh, I came to Australia in 1980 when I first came to Melbourne and I ran a course um, for people who wanted to explore drawing, wanted to explore creativity, but they, they I had no ambition to become artists. It was sort of based very much on the kind of understanding that if your eye is awake, then you see that everything in life is worth being drawn. The most ordinary things, like a whole lot of objects on a table, can be worth drawing. As Picasso said, every child is an artist. And we know that from our children. We watch them. They can't help themselves. They're spontaneously will take any material that happens to be available and start making images, start making marks. And, and um, to our great loss, when children go to school and we lose a whole profoundly important channel to connect with the world, to connect with our, ourselves, to connect with our, being able to express ourselves. I believe it's a very primal, activity, making it, you know, the connection between the eye and the hand, making images is a very primal process. And 
you know, when you connect with that, you connect with your own deeper self, I think. This studio is right in the heart of town. It's in the heart of Melbourne. And it's full of energy and shopping and, and pedestrians. And, but then we're up, up here on the third floor. And there's uh, several other artists around us. And it's like being in a little cave in the clouds. It's so, so quiet and it's very private. The reason I came here is because I hadn't seen my parents for a long time. And I've got two sisters as well. And they'd moved to Adelaide after leaving South America. I decided I want to explore the rest of Australia. Colour is a very strong element. And I think that, that comes from my childhood, from being in South America, and also from being in India. And to be awake to the, the power of colour, you know, the energy of colour, that's one thing. Another perhaps obvious thing is the whole understanding of the the spiritual life, you know, of, of, of meditation. And certainly my, my drawing and to some extent my painting comes from that. Before I start work every day, I'll sit in meditation. And that, that comes from, you know, when I, from when I very first went to India, um, which is, you know, half a lifetime away. It's about seeing clearly. And, and my conviction is that if you look at any aspect, any event of this, what, what the Buddhists call the 10,000 things in life, if you look, see it clearly enough, you see that it's beautiful.